Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome all of you to Cisco and Silicon Valley today. On behalf of John Chambers, our chairman and CEO, it is truly a pleasure to have all of you here present. I know many of you came a very long way to join us, and uh, you know I think this is really fantastic and the first inaugural event, of course, and Cisco is very, very honored to, uh, to have all of you present and to be the host. You know, Cisco has a long history of working very collaboratively with governments around the world, as well as organizations to promote innovation and economic development. Russia, uh, we have probably made one of our biggest commitments over the last couple of years. And as you probably are aware, investing a billion dollars over the next 10 years to promote innovation and economic development. I'm also honored to be part of the US-Russia Business Council. And I know that that organization also does a great deal to promote what is done between our two countries. Cisco is very committed to the success in Skolkovo. In fact, John Chambers sits on the Skolkovo Board of Directors. And uh, I think it's tremendous, as, as I just look at the progress we have seen around that project and what it will mean for Russia. So we share your excitement. Uh, we are honored to be working with you uh, in order to make Russia a better place for all of the citizens of Russia in the future. And also through that process to promote trade between our two countries. With that, I'd like to um, introduce the U.S. Undersecretary of State and Economic for Economic Growth, Energy, and Environment, um, Mr. Robert Hormatz. Uh, Mr. Hormatz is also the U.S. co-chair of this working group, and he's joining us from Washington, D.C. via telepresence. Mr. Hormatz. Sarasvati, Dobri Utra, Minyazavut, Bob Hormatz. I welcome all of you uh, to the United States. I want to extend my greetings uh, from all of us here in Washington. I want to particularly thank um, the U.S. government team um, that has worked on this, but even more particularly, Martin De Beer and Cisco for holding this inaugural meeting of the U.S.-Russia Working Group on Innovation. Uh, I also want to thank all of our Russian colleagues and friends for uh, giving us this opportunity to um, engage in a conversation on innovation and to uh, link our efforts together in this working group. Um, the, the technology that Cisco has provided, this wonderful technology, enables us in Washington to uh, link up with you via real time. And I think telepresence is one indicator of the, the kinds of technologies that are bringing the world together, whether it's from Washington to uh, California or Moscow to Silicon Valley. Um, these are the kinds of technologies that are sort of beginning to formulate the way the world is going to uh, work together even more collaboratively in the future. I also want to thank in particular um, our Russian colleagues who've helped organize this. Uh, Deputy Minister Fomachev, I want to particularly thank you for your presence and the presence of your team. I know you've come a long way and uh, you have uh, approached this with a great deal of energy and enthusiasm and commitment. So I want to particularly thank you and all the Russian delegation that has come to uh, California for these conversations and my colleague Lorraine Harriton, who has uh, been organizing this on the American side, who is a, uh, an expert in innovation and new technologies and starting new companies. So uh, Lorraine and her team uh, from Washington and from the American Embassy in Moscow have really done a great job also in putting this together. The timing of this is actually very propitious because, as uh, many of you doubtless know, our two presidents met uh, yesterday in Seoul, Korea, and one of the topics uh, on their agenda was the Bilateral Presidential Commission and the various elements of that commission where they hoped we could make progress over the next several months and years. And uh, one of the key elements, of course, is the economic relationship between our two countries and how to strengthen that bilateral relationship. One of the key elements of that, of course, is uh, technological cooperation and how we can work together on innovation. The, th what we're trying to do today, I think, is to advance the uh, mutual agenda of our two presidents and to 
figure out ways we can strengthen American Russian investment and trade ties and uh, particularly utilize innovation and uh, technology to bring our countries and our peoples and our innovators and our industries closer together. Both presidents, I believe, and many of us who work on these issues uh, recognize that there is enormous untapped potential in our economic relations and that by putting our minds together and developing uh, new innovative approaches and uh, working on new technologies, we can strengthen ties between our countries economically, but we can also do a great deal to uh, improve uh, the science that goes on. And there's a history of scientific cooperation between Russia and the United States going back many years. And the, the brain power and the innovative power of, of Russians and Americans is, is uh, obvious in space and obvious in uh, things like uh, um, cooperation on um, nuclear fusion, lots of things that are going on that involve our two uh, countries, experts in our two countries. One of the key elements of this uh, group is that under the uh, Bilateral Presidential Commission, this working group is going to be looked to by our presidents to come up with policy ideas and concrete projects that will help provide a welcoming environment for and provide support for innovation that will keep our economy strong and robust in coming years and also strengthen ties between uh, experts, uh, scientists, innovators um, in Russia and the United States. Uh, President Obama has made uh, on many occasions the point that innovation is uh, important. Uh, he's, in speaking to the American people, indicated that what uh, America is all about is, in fact, innovation, that innovation was really key in, in the early stages of, of our country, and that he also made the point that most new jobs are created in startups and small businesses. So we need to find ways of supporting small businesses and startups. And I think the same is true in Russia. Obviously, there are a lot of very big companies, but there are a lot of very innovative companies that are quite small. I was on the board of the U.S. Russian Enterprise Fund for a number of years when I was in the private sector. And I can attest to the fact that there is a great deal of entrepreneurial spirit in Russia. A lot of new companies were developed uh, during that period. That was about a decade or a little bit more than a decade ago. But um, the, the results of that you can see today in a lot of very innovative companies that were small then but aren't so small anymore. Um, we also were very pleased that there's so many excellent speakers who will be participating in this um, conference that you're having in Silicon Valley with vast experience in the private sector, non-private sector, government sectors, et cetera. Um, one particularly notable speaker is very, my, my very good friend, John Kao, who is going to be, uh, who's written a book called Innovation Nation and uh, has done a lot of thinking about what it takes to develop innovative companies uh, to uh, have an innovative atmosphere in education and in governance that can help to, uh, to boost uh, opportunities in, in Russia and the United States. Uh, I've had uh, the opportunity to discuss the agenda of uh, this working group uh, with my uh, co-chair, uh, Arkady Dvorkovich, who is now a, uh, in, in, um, in New Delhi at the uh, BRICS summit, I think. But he and I have had conversations uh, about this, and we are both very enthusiastic. We also had meetings with a number of innovators at the St. Petersburg Forum uh, last year, and, and he brings uh, to this a sense of dynamism and creativity. I'm sorry he's not with us today, but I know he's with us in spirit because I've talked to him and I know how interested he is in this uh, whole topic. Um, I again want to uh, also thank the U.S.-Russia Business Council and its sponsor, Celgene, for uh, hosting the welcoming dinner last night. Uh, Celgene is one of the many innovative companies, along with Cisco and others, that have really uh, demonstrated an enthusiasm for this process. And the point about uh, this from our side is the private sector involvement uh, that 
uh, has enabled this to take place um, and makes this working group unique and particularly influential in deepening cooperation and innovation between the United States and, and Russia. And we look to uh, Russian companies as well as Russian innovators um, to uh, participate with American companies and American innovators in, in moving this process forward. Because the really good ideas that you come up with are going to be critical in whether this working group achieves the kind of successes that we want. Uh, I also want to mention Skolkovo in particular um, because John Chambers is actively involved in this, the CEO of Cisco. Uh, Craig Barrett, who's an old friend, who used to be chairman of Intel, is actively involved. I was up at MIT just a few days ago and met with the MIT expert who has been working with uh, people in Skokovo, and I have to tell you, we met with the president of MIT, Susan Hochfield, and her team. They're very enthusiastic about the Skokovo model, particularly the innovative spirit behind it, but also the outreach, the fact that Skokovo is really going to be the center of activities and is going to have a worldwide set of interconnections and a set of interconnections in Russia itself. And that notion of collective innovation, that notion of getting innovators, scientists um, from uh, Skokovo linked up with people all around the world to deal with uh, competitive challenges in the area of technology, to deal with new scientific challenges is, is very important. So I, I can tell you from my conversations at MIT that the people up there are very enthousi enthusiastic about this as well and are very committed to this exercise. Um, I also, again, want to thank all of you for taking time out of your very busy days to do this. Uh, coming all the way over here, I know there are people who have come from, um, from Russia, from different parts of the United States, from Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, many other areas. So I want to thank all of you for your efforts. And again, tell you, I think what you're doing is very important to the future of our two countries, but also very important to the future of innovation around the world, because when you have creative Russian and creative American minds working together and creative American and Russian innovators working together, lots of very positive things are likely to occur in a, in a lot of areas, and perhaps a number of breakthroughs that will benefit not only our countries, but the rest of the world. So with that, I'd like to, uh, again, thank you and turn the discussion back over to Martin at Cisco. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, you know, as you were talking, uh, some, an idea came to mind for me. You know, innovation uh, is not an exclusive concept. In fact, it is very inclusive. And the best ideas can come from anywhere around the world. And that's really why I got involved in Skokovo as well. As a native South African, I came to Silicon Valley. Uh, and I will tell you that ideas can come from anywhere. And if you can harness those ideas uh, and make them and turn them into uh, value that can contribute to economies anywhere in the world and uh, countries trade in that process, it benefits everyone. So I'd like to encourage all of you as we go through the working group sessions, let's think of inclusive innovation that can benefit not just where each one of us come from, but really uh, what's best for our countries and what's best for the world.